If you're lucky enough to get yourself a new bike, here are eight of my favorite setup hacks to do on your new bike before you hit those trails. But before you do anything, make sure you hit the subscribe button or give us a like. Now, obviously you wanna set up your saddle height before you start riding, but my big tip is to not guess. Don't just sit on the saddle and reach for the pedals because sometimes you can lean and trick yourself and end up with the wrong saddle height. And this can give you knee pain or even lower back pain from reaching. My big tip is to measure your inseam from the bottom of your heel up to your crotch area and then match that number with your pedal to your saddle height. Now, some people always record their saddle to bottom bracket height. I don't like this because if your crank lengths change, then you won't have taken that into account. So match your inseam with the pedal to saddle height. And also do this in the shoes that you'll be riding because if they have a platform on them, then you'll end up with more or you'll need more length in those platforms. Now, the reason we match this inseam is because by the time you put your foot or the ball of your foot onto the pedal, you'll end up with a slight bend in your knee. And that's what you want to make sure you've got good power, but also you're not gonna injure yourself by overreaching. Now, first of all, with a new bike, it's really handy to take a Torx wrench out with you or a multi-tour because there'll almost certainly be something that's not quite perfect when you first start riding it. What's always common is not quite getting your handlebars lined up with the front wheel. My big trick here is to line up the handlebars with the stanchions of your fork. I see so many people using the stem on their tire and if the tire's out of line or if your stem's really short or you've got a lot of cables in the way, that won't be quite perfect. So use your handlebars on the tops of the stanchions of the forks. You absolutely need to set up the sag on your suspension, whether it's front, rear, or just a hardtail with front suspension. And I'll, I always start with either 25% for something really efficient, or 30% if you're setting up maybe a duro bike, or you want something a bit more plowy. And the way I recommend doing this is to get yourself a ruler, or even this little sag setter I've got here. Now, effectively, all you're doing is working out 30% of the overall stroke. So you can measure the stroke length, work out what 30% is, and then make sure when you've sat on the bike, the O-ring reaches that. Not everyone's blessed with RockShox sag measurements here. So if you don't have measurements, this is the best way to do it. It means you don't have to find the pressure charts and also pressure charts aren't always accurate. They're just a guideline. There's only so much these fancy chainstay protectors will do for sound. If you've noticed that your chain is slapping around loads and making loads of noise, maybe even jumping off the sprockets at the back and skipping gears, it might be that your chain's a little bit too long. You should have two slight bends in your derailleur. It should be not completely extended, but still have a little bit, almost all extended, in your biggest chain rings, both at the front and the back. If you do suspect that it is too long, then you'll need to take it off by using a chain breaker. And SRAM recommend that you get it into the biggest gear and you pull the chain together and the ends should meet and then you cut it with two extra links and that should be the right length but always cut it a bit longer than you think because you can take stuff off, but it's harder to put more back on. If anything feels wrong on your bike when you're out riding it for the first time, it's almost always air pressure. So make sure you take a hand pump out with you on your first ride and also a shock pump too, so that you can play around with your suspension. Now, if you don't know how to set up the tire pressure on your bike, a good rule of thumb is to start with your weight divided by seven, and that will give you your front tire pressure. Then it might be a good idea to add two or three PSI to that to put in the rear, and then just muck around with them to see what you prefer on your first ride. 
Also, I'd recommend getting yourself a tire gauge like this because track pumps and hand pumps can be different, but a tire pressure gauge will always give you the correct reading. If this is the first time setting up your handlebars, it's important to remember that there's no right or wrong way everyone has a personal preference. The way I like to start is to try and get them in the most neutral position and then move them two mil forward or two mil back or try both, see which one you prefer and then take it a bit further if you think you need to. For a full suspension bike, a neutral position to me is looking at the side straight down the handlebars and trying to get the grips looking as level as possible. If you have a hard tail, remember that the fulcrum's at the back and you will sink into your forks as you get on your bike, which means that you might want to roll your handlebars a little bit backwards so that when you're on the bike, they actually become level. Now, some people like to get their levers completely even, completely level, and I'm one of those people, to be fair. I will measure from the ends of the grips and make sure that my brake levers are exactly the same widths from the end of the handlebars. And I'll also get a little app that will measure the degree of the brake levers so that they're both exactly the same. However, I will note that not everybody's hands are the same. Some are slightly bigger and it might not be feeling right to get them perfectly mirrored on either side. So if that's the case for you, maybe just close your eyes and get your hands in the right place, loosen the bolts and get them feeling right and then tighten them all up and that should be fine. If you've got a new bike and new brakes and they sound a bit noisy, like they're rubbing or something like that, it might be that your calipers aren't aligned properly. And this is an easy fix to do. All you wanna do is get your bike over a nice light surface if you can, and look directly down through the brake pads, through the calipers, and see if there's an even gap between the disc and the pads. If they're not, it is an easy fix. All you have to do is loosen these bolts, apply the brakes, and then tighten up the bolts again. And that should put the disc right back into the center of the calipers. If that doesn't work, you might have to do it by eye. Just loosen the bolts a tiny little bit and try and move it with your thumbs. Obviously, try not to touch the brakes because your fingers and the oils may contaminate the discs. Well, hopefully those tips have helped you set up your brand new bike and you're ready to roll. But don't worry if you haven't set it up perfectly that first time or the first time you ride it, because sometimes it can take even a year to get used to a brand new bike. Tinker with it, don't be afraid to tinker with it. And if you've liked content like this and you wanna see more in the future, don't forget to subscribe and give us a big old thumbs up.